Hey everybody, Mrs. Bianchi. We're looking at chapter four project called Making Pedigrees. This is, has a 96 on the bottom of the page to make sure you're on the right page. A pedigree is a diagram that shows how traits are passed from one generation to the next in a family. A pedigree usually starts with a married couple in the first generation and then shows their children in the second generation, their grandchildren in the third generation, and so on. Standard symbols are used to represent females, or I'm sorry, males, females, and the relationship among individuals as shown in the figure below. The sample pedigree below is similar to the pedigree you will create for a chapter four project. Study the sample pedigree and then answer the questions that follow. So let's take a look at this little nugget of information. Males are represented using a square. Females are represented using a circle. And if there's a marriage or the two decide to have children, we use a stick. And if there's a stick with a branch coming off, then that would be the children of that set of parents. All right, so let's take a look at the questions. Write your answers in the spaces provided. What is the name or names of Irene's and Leo's sons? What is the name of their sons-in-law? So if we follow the stick and we look directly at their children. So their children would be Gordon, Emily, and Cheryl. Now, which one are sons because they have daughters? The way we determine that is we look for the squares. So we have Gordon as their son. Now, who are these two, two Irene and Leo? Richard married their daughter, Emily. Tim married their daughter, Cheryl. So that makes Richard and Tim their sons-in-law. So let's write that down. Gordon is the son of Irene and Leo. Write that down. And if you need more time, hit the pause button. And Richard and Tim are their sons-in-law. All right, let's look at question number two. How many grandchildren do Irene and Leo have? How many of their grandchildren are girls? Well, if they're, if they're the parents of these three children and they had children, that would make this row right here the grandchildren. So if we count how many there are, one, two, three, four, five, six. So Irene and Leo have six grandchildren. Write that down. How many of the grandchildren are girls? How do we tell if they're girls? We look for the circle. A circle would be girls. So we have one, two, three of them that are circles. Therefore, we can conclude that three are girls. Question number three. What is the name of Ralph's father? What is the name of Ashley's mother? Let's find Ralph and reverse your, you know, work your way up the little stick there. And this would be the father, right? Gordon. Now, if we look at Ashley, here's Ashley, follow the stick, and we figure out who her mother is. What mothers would be circles, so that would be Cheryl. Ralph's father is Gordon. Ashley's mother is Cheryl. If you need more time to write that down, hit the pause button. All right, let's look at question number four. What is the name of Emily's son? Find Emily. Here's Emily. Here's her son. And what's the name of Tim's son? So let's first deal with Emily's son. This is Emily's son, and we know it's a son because it's a square. Emily's son is Richard Jr. Second part of this question, what is the name of Tim's son? Here's Tim, and if we look and see who he, these are his, his children. So here's his son right here, Zach. Zach is Tim's son. All right, pause that if you need more time. Let's look at question five. After the pedigree was made, Richard and Emily had another son, whom they named Roger. Juliet married a man named Robert and had a daughter named Elizabeth. Zach married a woman named Jean and they had a son named Craig. Add all of these individuals to the pedigree. So these are the names that we just read, Robert, Elizabeth, Craig, Roger, and Jean. So let's just take one sentence at a time and add them to the pedigree. So let's go back to that first sentence. After the pedigree was made, Let's deal with this nugget here. Richard and Emily had another son. So let's find Richard and Emily. Here they are. They had another son. So how about we make another branch on that and then go down. And if they had a son, I'm going to drag over one of these squares that I already prepared. And then who's the son? The son would be named Roger. So let's take Roger and put his name right here. All right, so that takes care of what I underline, let's finish underlining that. We took care of all of that. All right, now let's look at this little nugget that I'm gonna underline in red. Juliet married a man named Robert and they had a daughter named Elizabeth. So let's find Juliet. She's right here. She married a name, um, um, she, 
She married a man named Robert. So let's put a stick. Like so. We'll put, since she married a man, we'll put a square there. And his name is Robert. All right, but we're not finished yet. We're not finished because they had a daughter named Elizabeth. So what we'll do is let's draw a line down here. We'll bring a circle in. And that would be Elizabeth. So we'll put Elizabeth right there. All right, so that takes care of the red part. Now let's look at this next sentence. Zach married a woman named Jean and had a son named Craig. So here's Zach over here. So he married, let's put a circle next to Zach. We'll put a line in between the two and they had a child and the child that they had, they had a son. So that means we're gonna drag another square over. So I'm gonna grab a square. I'm just gonna draw it. And their son's name, actually the wife's name is Jean. Let's fill in her name. Her name is Jean and their son's name is Craig. All right, so now we've done everything, right? We've added all those individuals to the pedigree and it's complete. So just double check to make sure you have everything. And then when you're done with this, you're gonna use these same individuals for the Punnett squares that you, that you will be creating for this family.